Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chocolate Ship Podcast. Each episode will bring less insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. Incorporating clover into a sword has multiple benefits in livestock systems. To discuss this in more detail, we're joined for this episode by Dr. Philip Crichton. Philip starts off by explaining how increasing the clover content can reduce the requirement for chemical in during the mid-season period. We discussed the inclusion levels of clover in a reseed mix and Philip highlights the various clover varieties that should be considered for sheep swords. We move on to focus on oversown clover into existing swords. With Philip outlining why the coming weeks are an ideal time to consider this. We discussed the various methods available to accomplish this and what impact pre sown management and site selection have on the successful establishment of clover in a sward. We finish up discussing grades of management post sown and why frequent grazing of light covers is a benefit to clover establishment. But we start off with Philip highlighting some findings from recent work being conducted in Chagas at Marie on the impact it has on animal performance. Yes, Karen. so I suppose um, there's, there's three main benefits really to incorporating clover into our swords. Um, the first one, as you say, is is the effect on lamb performance. Um, and it's really from now onwards, I suppose, particularly um, post weaning, um, lamb performance is increased on grass clover swords compared to grass only swords. What we're seeing here in Athen Rye is that the, the lambs are being drafted <coughs> um, about 10 to 14 days earlier um, from the grass clover swords compared to the grass only swords. Um, so that is a benefit. Um, in terms of uh, fertilizer um, nitrogen use, um, we are able to reduce um, the amount of chemical nitrogen that we have to put into the systems, I suppose, to support the same level of output. So we would have trials going on here at the moment where we're seeing that um, grass clover swords receiving 90 kilograms of chemical nitrogen per hectare um, over the course of the year um, are equaling uh, the sward output um, in terms of tons of dry matter uh, grown per hectare uh, for the year um, as um, swords, uh, grass only swords, which are receiving 145 uh, kilograms of, of chemical nitrogen per hectare. So um, it's, it's, it's a big saving in terms of, of what we have to spend. So economically, um, it's a saving in terms of, of what, we, what we have to spend on the, on the fertilizer bill. And obviously, um, from an environmental point of view, it's also a, a big benefit in that we don't have to use as much uh, nitrogen to maintain the same level of output. It's coming. It's coming into a zone at the moment, and for the next couple of months, like it's it's from a sward point of view, the proportion is increasing. When grass quality can be challenging over the coming months, so that's that's your kick in performance. And you said there, like we're getting that boost in grass production without the need for a larger amount of chemical in. So look, it's it's a big win win. I suppose, Philip, if I yeah. look at how do we get this into our swards, like. To deal with the standard way first, for those considering receding this year, obviously including clover in the mix is a sensible option. You might just give some indication, like what level of clover should we include in the grass seed mix and maybe what kind of varieties do we need to look at for sheep systems? Yeah, absolutely. So I suppose there's two main ways of, of getting clover into the sward. Um, and, and the most reliable way, I suppose, is through a, a full reseed. So if people are considering reseeding, um, what I would say is 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 to to include um, white clover in the in the seed mixture, and for sheep uh, swards, we're talking about including um, about two to two and a half kilograms of, of white clover seed per acre, um, or five to six kilos to the hectare in, in, in inside in in the mix. So your typical mix will probably be somewhere around ten or eleven kilos of grass, and then plus your two two and a half kilos of white clover. It's a slightly higher uh, inclusion rate maybe than what some of the standard mixtures um, might be. Um, but again, as we've often said in, in, in previous times, because the, the sheep sward is, is so much denser and um, we tend to need to have that higher seeding rate to, to get a higher percentage of clover established in, in the early stages so that it can compete with the grass over time. And I suppose the important thing, um, again, for sheep swards, is that we use a small leaf clover. So there's different types of clovers, um, small, leaf, medium, and large, and it's, 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 it's how big the leaves are. The small leaf clovers um, are much more tolerant of you know, tight sheep grazing, or, or maybe we won't even say tight, it's, it's the kind of selective nature that sheep 
um, graze, sheep graze down into the sward rather than, you know, cattle maybe will graze from side to side and maybe aren't quite as selective. Um, and these small leaf clovers, while they will be slightly lower yielding, um, they are much more persistent. Um, and I suppose the varieties we're talking about there are the likes of Cole Finn, uh, Galway and Aberace. Um, and they would, do, each of those would have been bred um, either in Ireland or in Wales um, and, and have been bred using sheep as part of the breeding program. So they've put, uh, they've been put under pressure and, and, and are doing what they should be doing then. What we're seeing out on farms is that they are able to stand up to sheep grazing. There's a suitable choice. I think we'll include the link to the recommended list for anyone to have a look at the different varieties of steel. Thank you. Yeah. Right, so the receiving is obvious method, and certainly a lot will be using that opportunity this year. But just in terms of getting clover into established or existing swords, like overthrown is something that's come back into focus a bit more. It's something that's worth considering on farms. I know it's something you've done a lot of work on. Maybe just like the timing of that overthrown, is it suitable at the moment to be considering it? Yeah, so I suppose the practicalities of, of trying to get clover in and a reseed is fine if you're reseeding, but you can't reseed the whole farm at the same time either. So the oversowing option is probably the more practical um, way of getting getting clover into the into the farm um, if you want to get it in quickly. Um, timing, yes, right now at the moment, really, um, May, May, June time, um, is, is, is the ideal time. The reason for that, I suppose, is that um, we, we need as long of a period as possible for the clover to establish in, in good conditions. And by that, I mean that there's still plenty of heat in the ground, um, you know, before we get into the winter months so that the clover can develop and, 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 and establish its, its stolons and that. Um, for over sowing to work, what we're looking for really is warm mice conditions. So at the moment, we've no shortage of moisture. Um, it's about getting we do need a little bit of a cut in the ground as well so that we can expose some soil, um, but we need that moisture for it to, to, to germinate. Um, and obviously the heat, you now look, it has been cooler than, than normal maybe, but <clears throat> hopefully, you know, over it's, the next it's, week it's, or so. It's looking it like it's going to come. To, yeah, it's forecast to warm up. So that will be ideal conditions. It's probably over the last couple of years, it's been tricky enough to get the two of those. Uh, to line up and that we've either been very dry and warm or very wet and cold um, but um, it, it's looking like at the moment if, if people were in a position to do it the next week or two weeks um, could be a very good time to, to, to oversaw with clover. You mentioned there about getting the seedlings exposure to soil there's a lot of different methods out there at the moment Philip or certainly there's a lot of different equipment suitable for oversawing. Are there differences in them and What's best practice for oversowing from a method point of view? Yeah, so I should have maybe made clear what I meant by that was that I suppose traditionally there would have been, when we talk about oversowing, um, a lot of people maybe would have talked about um, mixing clover seed in the fertilizer spreader with the likes of, you know, your P&K compounds or something like 0730 or whatever, um, and just broadcasting it um, with the fertilizer spreader. It was very successful um, in dairy and, and cattle um, uh, circumstances where the sward is that bit more open and, and you would have soil there exposed that can take the seed. Um, unfortunately, again, because of the, the much higher density of the sheep swards, we have found that really for it to be a success, you have to use some sort of a mechanical intervention, you know, some sort of harrowing, um, whether that's with them. Um, with, with tines or discs or something and um, to try and open up that 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 sward a little bit and get that seed soil contact it's it's getting that clover seed in contact with soil um, and then it's it's down to the level of moisture and the level of heat to get that to germinate but if if the seed can't get in contact with soil in the first place then no amount of of, of moisture or heat is going is going to make it a success so really to answer your question, any of these machines, no, there isn't really um, a difference. All I would say is that for to establish it successfully on sheep farms, some form of mechanical intervention. So whether it's one of the tine harrows or one of the one of these one pass um, or harrows with the with the discs and, and, and tines and rollers or whatever, there's a lot of different types of machines. It's going to depend on what's available locally or whatever. They'll all work. Um, I suppose the critical thing is um, is, is getting the field 
uh, grazed off good and tight or, or, or maybe coming in after cutting, cutting for silage. Um, so like Philip, you really are looking at a more purpose-built machine for sheep swords. Just maybe explain now just a little bit more like difference in that open sword that we might see on cattle pasture versus that really dense old pasture sheep, sheep sword. The sheep one's going to be a bit more tricky. It's just, is soil contact, is it grass competition as well? Yeah, um, so yeah, so competition with the grass. So really what we're trying to do here is um, for, for the clover to be able to establish, obviously when you're going into a full reseed, um, everything is developing at the same time. So everything has equal opportunity in terms of, 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 of moisture, heat and light. And light is a very important one for clover. And if you're over sown into an existing sward and it's an existing sward that's quite dense, the, the, the issue there is that the, the grass is, is, is going to be very easily going to be able to compete um, for light. And if that new clover seedling is, 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 is kind of shaded um, and the canopy of the grass closes in, it's not going to be all successful. So number one is, is that we're kind of ripping the sward a little bit to create a little bit of space for it um, so that it has the opportunity to get that light um, to, to, to develop. Like that's one factor going to influence. Obviously there are other you know, basics from soil fertility up. If you're going to make that investment this year and try and get into your system, what other key factors do we need to look for? What can influence it from a site selection point of view? Like how do we pick the best, the fields are going to get the best response of? Yeah, so exactly. So it's not maybe every field is going to be suitable for over sowing. So there's three main things. Number one, as you said, there is soil fertility, just like we talk about grass. If your soil fertility is, is below optimal, then, you know, it's, it's probably a case that maybe work on that this year and next year maybe. And, and once, you're, once you're happy that the soil fertility is corrected, um, then you can think about over sowing because again, the clover is going to be very sensitive to any deficiencies there. The actual sward type, um, so um, a little bit again, because we want to try and get this into a situation where it's going to be able to establish and, 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 and compete with the existing sward. Some of your really old, you know, permanent pastures that are very, very thick and, and maybe tatchy in the bottom, it's going to be very difficult to open them up enough uh, to get the clover to establish. So. If it's, if it's a really, really old sward that's very, very dense and you're not able to open that up enough, it may not be the most suitable. But if it's a relatively productive sward um, with, a, with a good content of perennial ryegrass that will actually benefit from the, the nitrogen fixation of the clover as well, um, it should be possible to open that up enough um, to, to get the clover to establish. And I suppose just the final one on, on field selection, obviously, um, in terms of, 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 of weed control, if you have a weed problem in the field at the moment, I would advise getting on top of that weed problem uh, this year um, with the view to over sowing next year. And the reason for that is, is that to, to get rid of those weeds, a lot of the sprays that we would use um, can have a residual effect um, for up to, up to four months. It depends on the spray you're using, but a lot of them are three to four months residual which would prevent the, the clover from, from germinating. So it's really a, a case of address that issue this year, looking forward to what you're going to do next year. Um, and I suppose we should just say in terms of weed control, we didn't mention it for the reseeding element of it. Um, there was an issue there with regard to clover safe sprays for, for, for white clover inclusion in, in reseeds. That issue is now resolved for this year at least. Um, there is a, a, an emergency license granted for the clover safe sprays. So nobody um, needs to worry about not being able to incorporate the clover into their reseeding mix um, this year because you will be able to get the product um, this year. No, oh, good point. Like, so you need a clean sword, you need a fertile sword and possibly some of those swords were reseeded recently that didn't have enough clover or the clover wasn't managed correctly. And so they're the ideal places to target it. Just in terms of management after Philip, some would indicate, you know, going or uh, suggested previously, an application of slurry after over can help it. Is there a benefit to doing that? 
Yeah, so I suppose, look, at um, what I would say there is maybe watery slurry. You, you wouldn't want very thick slurry that would maybe cake the, the, the surface, which could cause a, a bigger problem than benefit. But uh, watery slurry there, again, as we say, moisture is something that does help and that it softens up the ground and makes the clover seed you know, easier to establish. Um, and uh, also, I suppose, the, the application of the slurry sometimes can help with the the, the downward pressure in, 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 in forcing it down into that soil a little bit as well um, for, for the seed soil contact. Give it a bit of nutrients to play as well. Look, others would have indicated maybe, you know, we see coated or pellet clover as well. Is there any difference in that versus your ordinary clover seed? Um, the main difference is, well, look, yeah, look, there is coated uh, seed available and, and, and what the coating is, is basically a mixture of different nutrients. It can help, um, you know, when you're in an over situation, you know, anything that where you can get those extra nutrients there to help it germinate. The one word of caution is, is that when you're using coated seed, for every kilogram of, of the coated seed you're using, um, about 40% of it is the coating. So you're only getting about 60% of the the seed that you would be getting if you were using you know ordinary naked seed and um, so you'd have to build that into your into your into your seeding rate so like uh, just on a per acre per hectare basis your standard rate you would be going for over sown versus if it was a coated seed yeah so over sown we'd be up in the rate um another little bit even again in the sheep swords i'm kind of going at a rate of, of about two and a half to three kilos to the acre or, or six to seven and a half kilos to the hectare again because you're in a much more challenging environment a denser sward um, and to, to try and give yourself the the extra potential there to establish a decent level of clover in the sward we, we have to use a slightly higher rate than maybe would have been used um, on the cattle swards and then if it's coated you have to increase that accordingly look yeah. i'm going to bring you back on something you touched on earlier we talked about the competition of grass in the permanent pasture swards you know the risk of shading out our management post one, like we could have Everton right, pick the right field, weather comes right, do it properly the whole lot. If we don't manage it correctly afterwards, Philip, we're likely to maybe go not back to square one, but we're not going to get as good a success rate as we would have hoped for. Like, what are the key things we need to look out for in this first year we're trying to get that clover established? Yeah, so I think if people could remember one thing about the post sowing management is getting light down to the new seedling and how you'll get light down to the new seedling is to graze it, uh, graze it frequently at light, low covers. So don't let very high covers of grass. It's about controlling the, the, the cover of grass on the field for the rest of the year. And by that, I mean that it's not getting really strong, that it's not closing in the canopy, the top of that sward is not closing in so much that there's no light getting down to the base. So frequent light grazings, you know, don't cut for silage. Um, if you're sowing into a paddock uh, now in the next week or two, uh, don't close that up for silage and 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 have that shaded, and um, because the, the seedling is just going to struggle. So frequent light grazings, um, um, and 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 when we get to the end of the year, maybe try and close that field later in your rotation, and um, to give it as long as possible light getting down again. If we closed up early, and there was a good cover of grass built up over the winter, that could be shaded through the through the winter into the spring and, and could inhibit the, the development of, of the clover plant. You're looking to graze that really right through to mid to late November, weather permitting? Yes, yes. Okay, so like it's frequent grazing, it's grazing tight. Just in terms of grazing tight, like in sheep swords, as you indicated earlier, they're very selective. Um, anecdotally, we would have always assumed it was more difficult to maintain in sheep swords, not that I think your work over the years has proven otherwise. How tight a residual, Philip, are we going on it? And is it is a residency period is as big an issue as the residual we're grazing there in terms of trying to maintain it there long term? Yeah, so, so I suppose the residency thing could have been part of the issue maybe historically as well in that, you know, as I said, the sheep can be very selective in what they graze. So um, if they are continuously on the same field, the same paddock, um, and clover is, is, is a very palatable, very digestible forage. So they probably are selecting that out and maybe overgrazing the clover, even if the overall um, uh, the overall sward height was maybe not overly tight. And um, so I suppose the whole paddock rotation thing where, you know, we're trying to target, you know, your two or three days grazings at a time 
it's it's very beneficial to the to the to the grass plant in that you know as the new leaves appear the sheep have already moved on and you're maximizing your grass growth but also it's it's it means that you're getting in there quick and grazing down that sward you're getting light down to the clover and it also means that the opportunity for the sheep to really overgraze that clover is eliminated as well so it helps in in development and the persistency over the longer term because because uh, the sheep are moving more frequently and aren't getting the opportunity maybe to overgraze. Philip, just for anyone who wants a bit more information, like there was a very useful publication released just a number of weeks ago on the establishment and management of white clover that you were involved in. Yeah, absolutely, Kieran. So um, there in April, um, we released a, a booklet, um, and it, inside it, it details a lot of what we've discussed um, around the, the management and establishment of clover, and it's for for dairy, beef, and sheep farms. Um, Obviously, from a sheep perspective, where there's specific differences or whatever, they're highlighted in the booklet, and that was that was put together by by um, the Grassland uh, Research Department, um, and it includes results from from ongoing studies and recent studies, and obviously then um, detailed management advice um, to get the most from white clover swords. That was a very useful reference, and I include a link to that in the description. So Philip, maybe just to sum up, like aside from a direct reseed going in, the window for oversown is reasonably tight at the moment. It might suit some systems in which surplus is possibly coming out the next couple of weeks and fields grazed out tight. You have an opportunity to get in, but you really need to, you need to be focusing on that in the short term. Yeah, really, I suppose by the middle of June, you know, end of June at the latest, we're, we're, we're trying to target getting that in so that it has as much time as possible to, to, to establish itself for the rest of the grazing season. Certainly something worthwhile considering. Philip, good to have you on. Thanks very much for that. Thanks, Kieran. Okay, we're going to wrap things up at this point. Again, as Philip indicated, the window for oversown clover is short on farms at the moment. We're in a key period for it. It is one of those investments that we could strongly consider for this season. It has benefits there in terms of reducing nature and that improvement in grass production and the benefit in terms of animal performance. And hopefully that benefit will be there each year if we can maintain the clover in the sward. I will include a link in the description to the booklet Philip mentioned. It's a very useful guide. It's a great reference to have for both the establishment and management of clover. That was only released this year. I also will include a link to the recommended seed variety list. Again, a very useful reference for either grass seed or clover varieties that you may want to include in your reseed mix. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates from the Sheep Programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chalker Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll get notified for any new episodes we have.